We've all seen the tents and shelters of the homeless on our streets. Difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Kathy Weiss saw them too. Right. I think I was like most people. I was a little bit afraid of homeless people. Didn't know what to expect. Didn't know if it was all mental illness and drugs and alcohol. I just know that they're just like you and I. They're just people going through a really tough crisis in their life. She'd find out soon enough. This is my father's house, and we are a shelter for homeless families. And over the years, build a program that moved 1,800 homeless families. These are former residents. Off those streets. He moved clear to California. Then he and into back, stable housing. And he owns his own home. Kathy grew up in the Dalles, in a Christian household, where her mom showed her a passion for helping others. She wanted me to have that love of people and that desire to serve. And so there you have it. <laughs> I think that's probably maybe where the desire came to serve. I, I knew from a very young age that I was supposed to do that. She moved to the big city to attend Portland Bible College and eventually landed at East Hill Church in Gresham as a children's pastor. Her Christian identity runs deep. I tell my, my staff, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. <laughs> and it's really true. <laughs> In the late 1990s, she and a co-worker felt called to create a shelter for homeless families and started knocking on doors to raise money. It went exactly nowhere. And we would say, hey, um, this is what we want to do. We didn't have a name. We didn't have a dime. And they'd go, oh, yeah, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> but know, then a huge you know, donation came in, $250,000 from a businessman wow. who had sold his company. And I looked at that and I thought, I'm so glad I'm sitting down because <laughs> I would have fallen over. I just, I just knew it. It was just like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it. It allowed them to buy a duplex in the year 2000. Within the first week, five families moved in, and Kathy began creating rules and structures that would help rebuild lives. She also started planning her next move. It took four years, but she raised nearly $4 million and built the current My Father's House with cash, no loans, debt-free. Now she could help many more families. Oh, it's so good to see you again. Oh, you too. Oh, my goodness. I love you so much. I love you so much. And thank you so much for that. Cynthia Moore lived here three years ago. I love this room. This was for the families that was up here on this floor. And so we would, Cynthia know, lost her job, family, got evicted TV, from her apartment, TV, and ended up homeless. She arrived at my father's house with her seventh grade daughter, desperate as anyone. And this was my room, 307 Trust. Each room has a word like that on the door. It's part of the shelter's attempt to change lives. And everything they do is just, it's amazing. <laughs> All residents are required to get jobs. We call it the Learning Center. And attend classes here on topics ranging from self-improvement to smart money habits, cooking, spirituality, and more. We do a lot of craft kind of projects. I went in there and straightened all the videotapes and stuff. And Residents must keep a curfew together, so. and stay clean and sober. They have a chore list and it's by room number. There are daily chores and room inspections to make sure the rules are followed. We don't tell people what to do, but we try to lead them into the thought process of what are your choices and what are the consequences of those choices. Basic parenting. It is basic parenting. <laughs> but a lot of people haven't had that. Yeah. <laughs> It worked for Cynthia, who now has her own apartment in Vancouver. <laughs> so yes, I've been in my place now. Um, it'll be three years. Um, yeah, it'll be three years this coming November of this year. It'll be three years that I've been here. Think you'll so. ever be on the street again? No, no, because I've, I've learned a lot. Not everyone is so successful. About 25% do not make it and leave. And I'm proud to call my family, every one of them, even the ones that don't make it, even the ones that leave here screaming, yelling that I'm horrible because they can't do their drugs here. I, it's okay. It's okay. It's not for everybody. This is one of our rooms of a family. My father's house holds 28 families, yeah. each with their own room. How are you guys doing? You settled, you're settled in and It's free to the, the families. Class. Look at that ba precious baby. The $600,000 yearly budget covered by donations and fundraising. Okay. And we're very glad that you're part of our family. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And I mean it. The families can stay for six <laughs> months. If they need more time, they can apply for apartments next door, which cost $500 a month. We are very blessed. Yeah. Um, 
And the families get to shop at a small store on site. <laughs> we write down kind of what they get. We have, um, we have this done by room number. Okay. Oh, you make an appointment to come in shopping. It's all free in here. They get to shop twice a month. We have limits so that there's no hoarding going on. Mm. We don't want anyone to hoard. Moving from the chaos of the street into my father's place is a big deal for most. This is room 202, and this is my home. Daryl Peake slept in a car with his nine-year-old son last summer. Yep, nine and a half. Stunned and at how far photo, he had uh, fallen. Absolutely, yes. Oh, man, how did I get here? Um, yeah, how did I wind up here, especially with my kid? I was thinking um, depression, anxiety, uh, all, the, all the dangers of the streets, and I, I just got to get out of the situation. Man, he also um, found was, my father's house. I, could, I can't really put it into words. The feeling that I felt when, when my son really figured out that we wouldn't be sleeping in the car anymore. Yeah, I'll bet yeah. you feel safe. Yes, absolutely. A punching bag stands in their room, a Christmas present from Santa who visited the shelter, and a promise of a better future. Feels good to hear. Beside it stands a father who has a job and his dignity. It feels good to say that I'm proud of myself and what I've been able to accomplish, even though it may not be much, but I'm taking the steps to get in a better position. Just so you know, I really am a hugger. It's all so thanks to a woman with a heart for serving others. Oh, isn't she sweet? Oh. <laughs> for my life and for the last 20 years, this is what God's called me to do. I'm so glad. A woman who got over her fear of the homeless <laughs> and embraced them as people. <laughs> Oh, God bless you guys. And family. I'm very, very, very excited to get to know you better. Thank you. My kids will feel more relieved to be here, too.